I'm here with Mira Rao and I'm excited to talk with her about the progress that she's made in her business. I think a lot of you will find this insightful uh, because this is uh, we're sharing not only progress, but also the lessons learned along the way. First of all, hi, Mira. Thank you for doing this. Hi, George. It's my yeah. pleasure. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. So Mira is in my uh, client group. And so we'll get to see Mira several times in, in this kind of interview format throughout the year. Um, so, you know, each time, you know, Mira, you'll be sharing some insights and something that will be hopefully inspiring and helpful to those who are watching. Um, but before we get going on that, why don't we just have you share your intro for your business? Uh, yeah, however no it comes out today is just great. Yes, <laughs> it's always evolving. And yes. I was thinking you'll see me three times, probably in various locations, because I'm not normally up here in yeah. my little treehouse loft. But yes, yes. that's the first time I've seen um, it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm a resilience and embodiment coach, and I help people to heal trauma, feel more effectively and deal better with their lives. I help people navigate their nervous systems, their bodily sensations, and apply the wisdom of this into their healing and into their growth. And I blend too many modalities to talk about now, but we might get into that in the deeper in the chat, yeah. along with somatic practice, yoga, breathing practices and meditation awesome well so tell us how your business has evolved over the past well i mean since this is our first interview but we've actually been working together for for a little while so just how has your business evolved in the past let's say year Amazingly. And you know, I'm a total fan of yours, George, and I'll happily oh. do like a, a super um, evangelical testimonial <laughs> in this as well. <laughs> Just tell the truth. <laughs> that, it is the truth. It is. It is. I'm inspired by God when I tell the truth as well. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't have the business I have without having had your support, your strategies, mm. your ideas. And, you know, I know I took the action, of course. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I think. Um, well, I'll talk, I want to, I'll, I'll say this first, because you were asking me before we got onto the call as well, like the lessons learned as mm -hmm. well as the, the external signs of yes. how has the business progressed. Right. And I think like, and I was actually talking to my partner about it this morning, like coming in, I kind of did six months with you before I really launched into the business. Mm. And I was really working on that joyful productivity approach yeah. and I think one of the biggest lessons that I've learned is from you and over this time is how to find pace how to find the right kind of tone of approaching the work that holding it lightly mm. to actually make it sustainable so right. when we go up those elevations hit a bump go back we don't just collapse you know and Obviously, that's my own stuff in there as well. The resilience teachings, right. as you know, yeah, when, when I totally, first started totally. with you, mm. I just lost all of the Facebook stuff. But yeah. I think that's one of the biggest lessons. And in terms of my business progress, so. So be, before actually, you go there, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I feel like this is important enough to pause and yeah, reflect on this no a bit. Problem. Working lightly. I mean, to, yeah. that's a lingo we use around here. And yeah. um, to a lot of those who are listening to this, it's maybe their first time or second or third time they've heard this from me. Um, and I want to hear what you mean by that for yourself sure. and maybe what's one type of situation where you might apply that. Yeah. Um, so what I mean by it generally is that emphasis on presence in the moment, in the task. Mm. So focus mm -hmm. on rather than where am I going to get to at the end of this thing that I've done? But what is the, I actually experiencing it, I actually experience it as a pleasure. What is the pleasure available in the moment of doing this task yes. so that I detach from that fixation on the outcome? I so love it. Yeah, every, totally. yeah, everything becomes joyful in your language. For yeah. me, I would call it pleasure, becomes pleasurable, becomes yes. mindful and pleasurable. Yes. And actually, interestingly enough, as you know, because you've been watching my journey, one of the biggest challenges for me has been balancing working in my business, growing my business and getting my degree at the same time. Right. And yeah. The, <laughs> yeah, the area where I am applying it, where I've really learned, well, I'm practicing still, but feel like I've had a really big shift around applying it 
is in the university context, which impacts the business. And I think we all have this. We all have other things going on that we might take a bit heavily in our in our mm. lingo that, you know, maybe people are caring for kids or parents yeah. or whatever it is, you know, the, those examples that you give a lot, that we then put all this intense emotional energy around and it ends up impacting us and our business more because of that. And so right. that space yeah. for the business is not there. So for me, I'm actually learning how to apply, oh, I just show up, I do a university essay, I enjoy the process and it doesn't take all this energy, mm. you know, and away from the business. And of course I do that in lots of business tasks, but yeah. for me, the area where it's been most ironically impactful in allowing the business to grow in not having it suffocated is applying it to this additional area. Yeah. I love it. Thank you for um, sharing those, that, that, that's a powerful idea of just like how much is this task taking energy away from everything else and and this this finding the pleasure in the moment now so of course as we work on the business there are naturally most people think there are things that are many things that are we have to do that are not pleasurable that obviously we don't yes. do for fun um so is there an example I mean, gosh, even writing an essay. I mean, for me, that would not be pleasurable, and yeah. I, I have to keep working on the the joyful part of it. But do you have an example of of a business task that might business one, yeah, that might typically not feel pleasurable to you, but you find a way to to bring pleasure to yes. it? Yes. So again, because you know me, and I share a lot and quite expressively, tech. Tech oh yeah. Problems. <laughs> yes, so. tech challenges, tech solving. Te- I mean, we we do. You know, many of us I mean, we have faces on a daily basis. Sure, yeah. So what I've learned to do is anticipate the reality of what dealing with tech is. So dealing with tech is not a perfect, seamless. I just get this software and then I plug it in and I know how to use it and it works perfectly. Like that's never the reality as far as I'm aware. I don't, (laughs) maybe occasionally we have that happen. So I finally accepted that the reality is I plug it in. It doesn't work. I do a support call to the tech team. Mm -hmm. I try it again. I I don't know how to use it. I have to go onto Google and investigate all the different steps Mm -hmm. of how this thing Mm -hmm. works. And then I blah, 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 blah. And, And so in allocating time, so in my kind of chunks of time over the week, I was like, If I'm dealing, which I am at the moment, upgrading systems, if I'm dealing with tech, 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 anything, like for me, billing and um, booking at the moment and changing my software platforms, then what do I even call it? Tech troubleshooting. I have like on my calendar, a tech troubleshooting allocated of time at least 45 minutes every week some weeks I don't need it but anticipating that that's how the task will be has just taken away all that yeah. mm, you know angsty yeah. stressy yeah. resentful why is it like this it's like it's always going to be like this right and now I can just show up I've made time for it I show up this is the process of it and I don't know if I fully got to pleasure level yet. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that it is possible. It is possible. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> yeah. But I've certainly got to acceptance level. Right, right. No, that's that's it. So that comes first. Exactly. Um yeah. the the lack of at least we have to stop resisting what the experience is. And then we might go, hmm, is there a way to find some playfulness to this? Is there a way to find yes. some yeah, like like playfulness. I, I imagine with a tech job, like playfulness is one aspect of it. Like, oh, look how that works, or look how that didn't work. But the other aspect is like, it's like how like like another take on it would be like, how might this be improving my concentration or my or my patience or something like 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 some kind of like a more spiritual pleasure kind of thing. But um, but yeah, so. or brain one. Like I do feel I do yes. get a little kick out of the achievement of problem solving i'm quite a problem yes, solving oriented right, person right. so i do feel that i'm like yeah yes. i researched that i figured that thing out and yeah I exactly that's that. that there is there is definitely joy in in the accomplishment yeah so mm-hmm. speaking of which accomplishment let's talk about the what you've seen in your business then what that what mm-hmm. has it become well it's become a functioning business that i live off 
So I earn my entire income through the business now. Awesome. And yeah, which is really amazing. Like it's amazing to to be at this level and to feel that and to uh, be enjoying that. So in regards to the progress from the start, um, I think I had like maybe five clients or something mm. in the beginning already. Mm. So I did a little, I had a few going. I'd never done a webinar um, I didn't understand the practice of net caring as you've explained it and taught me. And over that time, so I had kind of on and off just real basic level stuff. So I had on and off drip clients kind of coming mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. and I'm now on a solid, you know, 12 to 15 a week, which is yeah. about my maximum for one yeah. hour work. It's great. That is, that's, that's yeah. more than most people. I mean, even, yeah, even, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. So I'm really, really pleased with that. And I'm also, yeah. I mean, what to tell you, George, is there like what specifically, well, you know, well, okay. Would be actually good for people to know. We, yeah. I, there is so much we could talk about, but, mm. and actually in the authentic outreach course, we will talk more about the, the your, yes. your referral process and, and yes. how you have developed that out. But but I do want to, for this one, though, I do want to um, ask about your webinar process and what you've learned from that, mm. um, because I do encourage a lot of people to try what doing webinars. So tell us about that. Like, It was what, huge. Okay. What have you learned yeah. from doing webinars? Are you doing free webinars? Tell us more about that. Yeah. So, yeah, you and I were talking about this off air before we started. It was kind of a milestone for me in my business. I think that um, around that time, because when I decided to come into your programs was the time when I really decided, okay, I'm going to really commit to business. I'm going to try and like peter out the part-time work and really go for it and give it everything I can. And I think that it was just a very natural thing that I had this really exciting idea and you'd been talking about webinars, webinars, webinars. And I knew that eventually I also want to kind of go towards group programs and delivering group stuff. So I was like, okay, a webinar is like a good little practice step of how do I put together content? How do I do a launch? How do I da, da, da. If I'm offering it for free, it's low pressure. I'll give it a go. But I was still nervous as hell. Like the first time was, oh, all my tools, I had to like unpack my entire self-regulation toolkit and have it like <laughs> present all the time. And my partner was, I was like, he was like on speed dial, like, okay, ugh, I'm freaking out. I'm on the floor. Like no one saw any of this, but you know, like I'm on the floor. I can't move. I don't want to do this. I hate it. You know, those, those <laughs> yeah. experiences. Wow. And um, yeah. And I prepped it. And for me, so this is that around that same time. So I had, you know, Um, only a few sporadic clients. I had, as you also know, lost my entire social media platforms six months earlier. So I had kind of rebuilt a little bit. Facebook, as some of you might know, Facebook sometimes erroneously, sadly, um, shuts down accounts. There was no reason for yours to be shut down. No, mine was hacked. Right, right. I'm sorry. Yeah, yours was hacked. Right, yours was hacked, which happens to a lot of people. And um, yeah, so you have to restart your whole social media presence. It's amazing. And, and, yeah. the, and I have to say, that's part of your learning. It's like, because you know, well, because you practice self-regulation, emotional regulation, et cetera, the way I saw you recover from that was so remarkable um, compared to other people I've seen who have <laughs> been destroyed pretty much when that kind yeah. of stuff happens. And so yeah. you were able to recover. And now today you've got your social media presence back and you've got your full yes. business. And okay. So webinars. So you know, tell us. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. But it was so much part of it because it was like, yeah. I was building, I was like kind of still, I was still that, that social media experience right at the beginning of kind of stepping mm. into, okay, I'm going to go into online business properly now to yes. lose it. And then to start again, like was such a big lesson as well of yeah. detachment. And if you just keep solid, consistent, right. do the things, you can still make things work. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so I was like, Oh, is anyone going to see it? Is anyone going to listen? Is anyone blah, 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 blah. But again, another lesson you talk about how the idea or the content will be the most 
important thing and the yes. most magnetic yes. thing. And if the idea has resonance with people, they'll yes. get it. Yes. And I felt like that's what happened. So um, I ended up with, I think for me, you know, the numbers were really good at that point. I'd never done it. I think I had 20 yeah. people sign up, yeah. 14 people yeah. signed up on the day. Right. Wow. Um, and one person signed up as a client out of that. Um, Great. Yeah. Webinar. That's... Yeah. But it was, yeah, it was real. I was so happy with those results and the experience of doing it on the other side ended up being again, that like, wow, I did this. I got through it. It's a really, I ha- it's a really gentle way of learning all the other stuff as well. Like how do I set up a sales page? How do I set up the billing? How do I um, do a email sequence and all those things without feeling like I have to make it work? You know, it's like that yeah. pressure. It's like, oh, yeah. I'll just kind of play here. And um, I mean, it was a learning experience. I mean, I, I really yeah. encourage everyone, like if you, whatever launch you're doing, if it's the first time or if it's been a long time, chalk it up as a learning experience, like detach from the results and say, hey, I'm getting back into this and I'm going to be learning a lot in, through the process, which you did. And so now when you do the next webinar, the next webinar, it's like, oh yeah, I've done this before, you know? And, well, I did. I think I ended up doing yeah. five last year. Yeah. Amazing. That's more mm. than most people. And so, um, and you got a client from that learning experience of doing the, the first webinar. So, so um, what can you tell folks who are wanting to do a webinar or preparing to do one? Like, like how might they <laughs> prevent themselves from having the, um, the nervous, you know, feelings and, and things like that. Like what, what, what can you tell them to, to help? Yeah. Well, I think you have to give yourself a lot of space when it's the first time. Yeah. So to allow for those nervous feelings, like mm. we can't necessarily prevent them, but we can work with them. So that's yeah. all the nervous system regulation yeah. stuff that I do. And most people will have some version of a practice that, that, that works for the, the key one though, that I'm going to share that I just love is reminding people when the nerves come, this is our biological drive away from threat towards safety and protection. Yes. And if you can just go, thank you, nervous system, for trying to keep me safe and connect to that beautiful protective intent that your body is engaging in in that moment, it just shifts everything. There's like this compassion. Oh, thank you, body. Instead of body, you're betraying me. I've got these nerves. My hands are trembling. I can't do anything. It's like, oh, this feels vulnerable. It's like a threat. You wanted me to be safe. I've got the message. I'm going to do it a different way. Let's take a breath and let's step forward into this. That one thing, like, thank you, nervous system, for keeping me safe, is transformative. Absolutely. Awesome. So I'd say, yeah, yeah, do that as a mantra. Say that to yourself over and over again. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. And, and then, I, yeah, I was going to say, like, the, the the term nervous system has bugged me for a long time. Like it makes me feel nervous just saying nervous system. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, could we say like emotional immune system or like protection <laughs> system or like yeah, care totally system can. or something? <laughs> but, well, you know, but, actually there is a circuit in the brain called the care circuit. Oh, so there's like seven primary emotional oh. circuits in, um, mm. in the brain yeah. seeking care. There's a whole bunch of them. One of them mm. is called care. Oh, there we go. There we go. Excellent. I love it. And so the webinars, um, when you did the webinar uh, and you got the client, like at the, like you were teaching something during the webinar. I mean, it was, mm-hmm, a, it was mm-hmm. a topic-based webinar. Yes. How did you transition into inviting them into your, your, okay. your service? Yeah. So the topic was embodied envisioning. So it was uh-huh. at the beginning of the year Yeah. and it was all about uh, setting up goals using embodiment techniques, using mm. somatic te- techniques. So mm. basically learning how to check in with your body when you were testing out your goals. Is this the yeah. right goal for me or not? Right. Basically teaching people how to um, systematize their intuition, you know, yeah. like yeah. understand the signals that the body was giving. So I taught people a whole bunch of techniques of how to do that and that the more regulated you are, the more yourself you are and you're not choosing your goals out of a reactive state, out of fear or people pleasing or whatever it is. So if you can come back to that regulated baseline Mm. and then begin to test out how does my body respond to these different goals, you've got a bit more of an accurate read. Mm. However, if you've got trauma there, so you might find that, so this was how I made the link. 
to deeper work, the invitation to deeper work for people. So like if you're finding that you regulate, but it doesn't really work, like you, you can't get to calm, then maybe you're hitting a trauma bubble where this, it's just so stuck that you're not going to be able to access either regulation or capacity to move forward in that particular area. And so then we need to do the deeper work, the inner child processes, the yeah. neurobiological resets, that kind of thing. And that was what I said. I was like, if you've done this, you enjoy this style of work. And I can't even remember how I worded it, but you yeah, know, sure, sure, and sure, yeah. yeah, you want to go deeper and, and, but it was that concept that I had explained that if it's not working, this is why that kind of got people's attention. Like I know they were like, yes, I know that experience and I want to fix mm. it. I understand it. Really good. Really insightful. Yeah. Give me just one second here. So when you made that imitation, um, you know, I, I, I imagine, you know, you, you, of course you did it in the, your a gentle way and you invited them in. Um, did you then send an email afterwards also with that invitation? Oh, did you send a recording? Like what was the, what was your process for that? Yeah. Yeah. So I followed the free to attend pay for pay the recording, recording. Okay. and people that were there got it free if they filled out the feedback form straight Excellent. away. Yes. So most of them did that. And then, so in that gentle invitation, I had put my Calendly link into the yes. chat. So I oh, think good. somebody just signed up right straight on. away. She was wow. like, I'll just book in. Yeah. And then and then I sent people that had given me the feedback. Yeah. So just again, those gentle like reinforcements. Here's yeah. the recording. It was great to have you. Thanks for your feedback. Uh, if you decide you want to book in or whatever Good. I said, Good. here's the link. Yeah. And then I don't think I did send an email out to my main list as well, offering the paid version if right. people wanted to buy yeah. it that yeah. hadn't attended. And I don't think I put a call to action for booking in that one. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And of course, we don't, just for those who are going to apply this later, we don't really expect the paid recording to be like a, a big sell, selling thing. Yeah, you might get an occasional person buying here and there, but but it is a product that you could sell later or give as a bonus as another product, as a part of another product. Um, and so, it does work. I did a guest one on someone else's yeah. and she emailed it out. I emailed it out to my list and a couple of people as a result of watching it. I loved what you said, Mira came and did a discovery call with me. There we so go. it, yeah, yeah it, it nice. still can be quite yeah. fruitful. Okay. Very good. Well, um, let's begin to wrap up. Uh, so since we're going to talk to you a couple of times this year, yes, um, yes. what would you like to celebrate as we when we talk next time like if you can imagine what 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 what's a focus that you're going to have in the in the next few months um what are you going to be working on and uh yeah. developing so that the next time we talk we'll be able to check in on that on that thing Put, putting you on the spot here it's it sort of is but i'm just trying to decide which things are going to be the most relevant yeah because essentially the the next the next quarter is really mm -hmm. about stabilizing the volume of clients I now have. So yes. maintaining my net caring practice right? Um, or AKA networking. And so just keeping that, keeping my systems going, mm. keeping this level of clients going, checking in with how my energy levels are going at yeah. servicing that level of clients, having uni back in. I'm also yeah. teaching three. Doing, starting your university in, in, in a month and a half, I guess, right? Yeah. 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 And then I'm also, um, I'm shifting, I teach three yoga classes a week as well. And wow. um, I'm shifting one of those classes to be a trauma sensitive specific class that nice. will be blended online in person from a, a local studio wow. here. Okay. So that would probably be, and then I'm also launching some collaborations with a, a psychologist here to do some mood and movement regulation, uh, Great. movement and mood regulation workshops mm. so I guess in three months if I've coped with all of that <laughs> and it's all going well I'd like the classes to have you know eight to ten people at least in right. them sustain the 12 to 15 one-on-ones yes. and then what I'd like to come from my collaboration with that psychology clinic I'd like to also add in a few corporates. So I'm doing a training for his staff as right. well first. Yes. yes. So I'd like to do more of that, like a 
two hour training, embodiment training, embodied, I call it embodied leadership. Yes. When it's done within the organization. Yeah. So I'd like to be delivering one of those a month, 12 to 15 clients a week, uh, three yoga classes a week with eight to 10 students in it and surviving um, university, the, the university uh, <laughs> with, with joyful productivity. Working with joyful, <laughs> yeah. So what I'll Excellent. celebrate the most, George, is if you can be like, Mira, you're actually happy talking about university yeah. in this session. I'll, well, I'll know. I'll no, know. You're actually here. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> and you're smiling. That's great. <laughs> Lots of progress right there. Yeah. 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 That's good. Okay. No, it's well, great. It's great to say it out loud. And I'm really, yes. I will rewatch this and see what I said next time yeah, we do exactly. it. Exactly. And, and, and those who in. are watching this and listening can follow up with you or yes. to, to to watch next the next one and then see how it went. Um, Feel free to be my accountability buddies. I welcome awesome. it. I welcome it. Awesome. Um, where can people follow your journey, just your work, uh, your content? Where, where yeah, would you like most... if you gave like one or two most important um, places? So most important for content, the concepts around yes. embodiment and yes. uh, emotional regulation is Facebook and Instagram. Cool. If you want to see a l- beautiful, and then YouTube is where I post a lot of the yoga stuff. Okay, cool. And Facebook would be the Facebook business page. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, and uh, so sorry, Facebook business page and Instagram for the, for the embodiment yeah. stuff. Yeah. And then in the, the YT for the uh, for the um, the yoga. Yeah, okay. I put lo- awesome. I like I load up free yoga class recordings on there. That's all amazing. That sort of amazing. Thank you so much, Mira, for doing this and for Thank you, uh, all that you do to support your clients and your mm-hmm. colleagues and folks in the community. So yeah, thank you. Well, that's like hundred percent back at you. Thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm grateful to have to be able to enjoy the journey with people like you. So yeah, mm-hmm. thanks. Thanks, George.